Hey guys, welcome to part two of the breakdown. I'm here with my man Kai Kara France on the latest season of The Ultimate Fighter, so check him out on that. Um, part two of the series, what we're gonna focus on is the adjustments. Uh, high level fighters can adjust their game plans. So in part one, we, we studied each fighter's uh, strengths and their weaknesses and what kind of game plan they're trying to implement in this fight. In part two of the series, we're gonna focus more on these game plans but how each fighter can adjust these game plans during the fight uh, to better suit their opponent's strengths and weaknesses. So first we'll check out Eddie, then uh, study McGregor. So let's check this out. So as we studied in part one, uh, Eddie Alvarez primarily likes his, to pressure his takedowns into the cage. So he likes to press his opponent into the cage and take them down. One uh, skill that Conor McGregor has shown that he is great at is actually defending takedowns against the cage. Against Chad Mendes, he defended takedowns against the cage. Against Nate, all the takedowns uh, he defended were against the cage. It's because as his opponent pressures in, uh, latches his hands together, he likes to come overhook, uh, cross fades his opponent or control their hands. As they pressure forward, he drives his hips and lifts his opponent up as well. So as his opponent comes in, peels him off the cage, he overhooks heavy, and will pull his opponent up, defending the takedown. Here we can watch McGregor's takedown defense against the cage. And we can see him defending the takedowns against Chad Mendes uh, on the cage. And here in this last fight against Nate, Nate was pressuring him into the cage. Uh, opening him up with strikes and looking for this takedown, uh, but McGregor did a great job and uh, Nate was unable to secure any takedowns uh, against the cage. Uh, Connor has great balance and he uses uses that uh, cage to even regather his balance uh, even more. We'll see him put his back on the cage, uh, regather his balance and defend the takedown. He's one more. Nate has his hands clasped together, goes to pull Connor off. Uh, Connor drives his hips forward and defends the takedown. So the adjustment that uh, Eddie will make in his game plan, he may try to pressure Connor against the cage and try to take him down. Uh, say this doesn't work, we'd like, uh, I guarantee Eddie has drilled takedowns out in the open. So Connor has been shown to be more susceptible to takedowns out in the open ground in the middle of the cage. So as he uh, Eddie will shoot him for these takedowns, like Chad Mendes, come in for the takedown, turn this corner, and get his opponent to the ground. So look for Eddie to adjust when the takedown against the cage isn't working, and look to take his opponent down uh, in the center of the cage. McGregor's uh, shown to be far more susceptible to these takedowns uh, in open space as opposed to the cage. So I'm thinking that Eddie, Eddie may look to make this adjustment and take him down in open space. Uh, we can see here, uh, Mendes had great success taking Connor down in open ground, uh, hitting him with his blast double, turning the corner, and securing the takedown. Here we can watch Eddie prefer this as well. We can see the southpaw, Rafael, uh, position himself to attack directly in front of Eddie. Eddie chooses to change levels and look for this exact same takedown. So one thing that Connor uh, has the skills to do is be an offensive fighter uh, and lead and also counter punch, which a lot at a high level, a lot of fighters are either one or the other. They are either an offensive fighter or a counter puncher. Uh, very few strikers like Connor McGregor can be offensive strikers and counter fighters at the same time. Primarily in Connor's UFC career, We've seen him stand in the pocket, control the lead hand, pressure forward and uh, attack his opponents with straights, stabbing kicks and power attacks. Uh, what Connor should adjust to against Eddie Alvarez. Uh, one of Eddie Alvarez's strong suits is standing in the pocket, uh, throwing overhands at his opponents, uh, changing levels, shooting for blast doubles and switching between these two to attack. To avoid this situation, Connor may want to switch back to what he is, uh, another skill set he has, which he is very good against. We can see early on in his UFC career, or pre his UFC career, he was a counter puncher. He would stand here, he would control the lead hand, he would draw his opponents in as they threw the strike. He can stand out and counter punch over the top. 
So look to Connor to adjust, not only be an offensive uh, fighter, but show his other skill set, draw Eddie in, and counter punch against him. Here we can watch the negative aspects of Connor using this offensive uh, pressure fighting southpaw style against a fighter that likes to change levels, uh, use a blast double and an overhand. Uh, we can see him positioning himself, controlling the lead hand, but actually getting caught with a couple of these right hands uh, on the chin with a guy like Eddie who, who possesses the power here against Rafael, uh, using the same punch to hurt a much bigger fighter. Uh, Connor may want to change strategy. Here we can watch some of McGregor's successes as a southpaw counterfighter. We can see him draw out the 2-3 of Aldo and counter it over the top with his left straight. Uh, this is earlier on in his UFC career against Marcus Brimage. Uh, he used this technique um, a lot to great success. He'd draw out the offense of Marcus and come over the top with his, his straight left or his left overhand. Just counter punching. And it was beautiful to watch. So that was today's video, uh, we are focusing on adjustments. So we've looked at the game plan now in part one, we've looked at how a high level fighter such as Conor McGregor or Eddie Alvarez can adapt their game plan mid fight to have more success depending on what their opponent is doing and how they have game planned against them. So that's today's video guys, uh, check out next time in part three as we compare the two and make our predictions.